Howdy folks, after playing this title, I hella, hella wish I were reviewing an actual good basketball game. You know, something like NBA Jam, College Slam, maybe even NBA Street. Instead, I have to talk about End One Street Ball, a game that I'm almost certain that many of y'all haven't even heard of. This is a special title though because this was the very last game Black Ops Entertainment made. Pretty much, Shasta. Before I put this dreaded title into my PS2, though, a little history lesson. As with anything to do with Black Ops, there is very, very little info on them as a company. You folks will have to excuse me for sounding like I'm reading off of a Wikipedia page here, because that's literally where I found most of the information. The company was established by four MIT graduates in 1994 Santa Monica, California. Their first game was Agile Warrior F-111X, which was released in 1995. After that, they would spend the next 12 years shelling out an additional 15 more titles. This is where most of the info on Black Ops ends, but I was able to find a tad more. They have a website up, which by the way looks like it hasn't been updated in years, and apparently they still sell shit. Not too many video games, save except for an app title released in 2017. Instead, they sell, what else, stock market software for tablets and phones. And that's it. That's all the history I could dig up. And that's probably all there is, as of currently. So where does that leave N1 Street Ball? Well, as it turns out, I found a whole lot of nothing concerning this game's development, other than that it heavily promotes the N1 brand of basketball merch and the N1 Live Tour. Now, for those of y'all who are wondering what the latter is, think of the Harlem Globetrotters, but with less of an emphasis on humor and theatrics. I really wish I could have found more info on Black Ops and this title, but I honestly just couldn't. That's almost an understatement, my four-legged friend. But why tell when I can show? Uh, oh. I want to make a quick statement. The review is going to be pretty short because I didn't play this game for that long. I know, shame on me. I usually do try to complete a game before I review it, but N1 is hella fucking boring. A good example of that is the Create an Athlete feature. I typically like games that let you customize your character. Most of the time, devs will put a lot of effort forward when it comes to stuff like this in a game. Then you have N1 where the most minimal attention was given. I don't mean that in just the amount of assets that's presented to the player, which by the way there isn't that much, I mean it in the blandness of the assets that are presented. They're basic as all hell. I guess you could say that the devs were aiming for a more realistic basketball game, but if that were the case, then I think this title wouldn't have based itself primarily on the N1 Live Tour. At least I get to adjust my character's height and body features to my liking. But before we actually go through N1's story mode, I'd like to play a quick game first and show you guys the confusing as hell controls. Bad controls. Again. You know, this is starting to become a theme with Black Ops titles. The left analog moves the player around whilst X passes, square steals, triangle jumps and blocks, and circle shoots. Pretty normal stuff for a 6th gen basketball game, right? Yeah, I thought so too, until I realized that my team was getting its ass handed to it. When you're in possession, you're supposed to use the right analog to do certain movements and tricks. This, in turn, is supposed to psych your opponent out and trip them up and you go for a basket, or try to get further to it. Sounds easy enough, but it's not. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do to even get it to work. There's even objectives in this game where you have to perform certain basket tricks, and those usually incorporate using the shoulder buttons along with the face buttons. 
You see what I mean about how the controls are confusing? I never had this kind of problem with any basketball game I've ever played. Situations like this typically need tutorials. Fortunately, N1 has that. However, it doesn't show you everything. For instance, the tutorial only shows you what to do offensively, and even then, it's bare bones. It doesn't show you how to steal, it doesn't tell you how to defend properly, and it pretty much doesn't show you how to do anything defensively. You're left to figure that shit out for yourself. The tutorial also neglects to show you how to use the right analog properly for tricks. The basketball tricks are one of N1's main features, and the tutorial does fuck all in telling you what to do. I know it kinda sounds like I want the game to hold my hand, but I'm not familiar with this. I'm actually a noob and I never played N1 as a teenager. Why did Black Ops find it necessary to not tell the players crucial things on how to play their game? I hear folks sometimes complain about tutorials in video games, and I can understand that, especially when you're already accustomed to how a particular title works. But then you get rare examples like N1, where the game really needed a full-fledged training level. Well, I have no idea how the hell to play this properly, but I'm gonna go through the single-player mode just to see how far I can get. I don't have high hopes. I'll use the character that I created at the beginning. I know I have a fair amount of real-life N1 athletes to play as, but for shits and giggles, let's see how good my avatar can do. The story opens up in Linden, New Jersey, where my avatar talks about his skills and how he wants to be an official N1 player. His friend here issues him a challenge for one-on-one, -on -one, and the game begins. You know, the story does kind of intrigue me. Kind of reminds me of Tony Hawk Underground's opening story. Well, everything seems okay right now. My opponent and I are tied, but I was able to do the obligatory goals. Okay, now I'm starting to get my ass kicked. Oh, got the ball. Um, what do I do? Look at that, he only needs one more point to win. God damn it! Pfft. That was it. Game over. Whilst getting footage for this review, I went on the internet to see what the fuck I was doing wrong. And guess what? I found nothing, and I still end up getting whooped. In fact, I think I'm playing even worse now. Big Big Shoe, the block MVP, taking shots like... If only I knew how to defend. I'm doing the entire right analog shit I'm supposed to, but I don't know how the hell it even works. Oh, come on, game. Uh, that's it. I can't play this anymore. Yeah, done, folks. I can't even defeat my first opponent. You know, maybe it's me. Maybe I just suck at this. But you know, maybe the game sucks too. I hate to cut it this short, but when I can't even get past the first level, that's when I call it quits. The only good thing I can even say about N1 Street Ball is that the music is good, and for its time, the graphics are good. The story seemed interesting as well, but I'll never know. With some practice, I'm sure I'd probably be able to get further, but let me be upfront with y'all. This was actually a pretty boring experience for me. I'll be completely honest, I was probably the wrong person to review N1 because I'm not really into realistic sports games. I mean, if it's something more along the lines of like NBA Jam or Mutant League Football, I love that stuff. But if it's something like NBA 2K or Madden, I don't really play those. Even so, I bet NBA Live 07 would have been much, much more enjoyable to play than N1 Street Ball. This was Black Ops' last physical title, and like with everything they've made, they didn't give a damn enough to make it worthwhile. I'm giving N1 Street Ball a T for terrible. In my opinion, it wasn't worth the plastic it was printed on. Well, folks, 
folks, those were the two bad Black Ops games. But everybody says that these two games here are good. So I'll catch you folks in the next episode when we conclude our Black Ops Marathon.